Hello everyone. So today we're going to go over uh, my basic portfolio and how I allocate all my different asset classes. Uh, this video should help you get a better understanding on how to build a well diversified portfolio, uh, specifically if you're investing in ETFs or any sort of like mutual fund index funds, stuff like that. Okay, so this is uh, pretty much the overview of my portfolio here. These are all the ETFs that I hold. Um, I actually only invest in ETFs. I don't do any individual stocks or mutual funds. I just find that ETF is just the right type of investment for me, given the fact that they're passively managed. So I don't have to do a lot of research with any specific company. Um, they have pretty low expense ratios compared to mutual funds. So that means that I'm able to keep a lot more of the earnings when the dividends are paid out. Okay, so let's take a look at the ETFs that I have. Uh, at the very top here, that's pretty much just the cash that I have uh, currently in this account. Uh, I recently did a major purchase on in real estate. So, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and go one by one, just to kind of show you how I build my portfolio. Uh, keep in mind that this portfolio took me a while to to build. I've only been investing in this account specifically for the last year or so. Um, so I've had to gradually start to buy my ETFs. So I didn't buy all at once. Uh, I do all my investing on a month-to-month -month basis where each month I will deposit in money into this account and I will buy investments then. Okay, uh, this is a retirement account, so this is my Roth IRA account. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start uh, going down the list. So the first one you see here is ADG, and this is the U U.S. aggregate bond market. So this pretty much holds any bond you can think of, uh, whether it's uh, government bonds, long-term bonds. This also holds a little bit of corporate bonds. Uh, it's basically a representation of the entire bond market. Okay, um, so the current quantity I have is about one share. But basically, uh, since I've bought in this this ETF, you see that the total gain has been about negative two point seven seven. Now I'm not too worried about the loss um, because again, the bonds are basically designed to kind of help you outbalance. The rest of your portfolio. What I do like about the bonds is that they pay a higher dividend uh, ratio. So each month I actually get uh, interest payments from all my bond ETFs, which is nice because I can go ahead and use the, the interest as reinvestment. So you see where it's quantity, it's 1.01. .01. The 01 is actually the amount that has been reinvested from the, the interest that I received on a month to month basis. Okay, so uh, the next one is the FDIS. This is uh, more of a large cap, uh, meaning that these are primarily large companies. And this is specifically an ETF that focuses on consumer, consumer discretionary companies, um, you know, stuff like Best Buy, uh, companies that sell consumer products to be, and services to people. And so far, this one has done really well since I purchased it. it it's uh, positive about... 17.85%. I have three shares of those, so that's pretty nice. And the next one is financial. It's a financial ETF. So this one pretty much holds the majority of the financial sector. So you'll see JP Morgan on here. You'll pretty much see all your banks in this ETF. Uh, you'll see some insurance companies, stuff like that. And uh, I recently purchased this one, so there's not much, much of a gain on there. I only bought one share. The next one is FRE. L and this is a uh, real estate ETF pretty much holds a large amount of real estate investment trust also known as RITs and I was really attracted to this one because of the dividend that I receive by holding this ETF the dividend ratio is about 3.8% on an annual basis and so I realized that uh, I had a lot of large cap companies and a lot of stocks domestic stocks uh, large cap companies middle cap companies in my portfolio and I realized that I didn't have uh, a lot of real estate in my in my portfolio. So I, actually, I was reading uh, Berta McKeel, Random Walk Down Wall Street, and it should say it said that if you're in your mid twenties, you should have about ten percent real estate inside your investment portfolio. So I went ahead and bought five hundred dollars worth of real estate, and um, and actually, uh, sorry about that text, but anyways. I went, I went ahead and bought 524 um, 
dollars worth of real estate, and that pretty much gave me my 10% allocation towards real estate. Okay, the next one is FTech, which is a technology ETF, and this one has probably been my best performing ETF out of all the ones that I purchased, and I've, I'm positive 25%, and I probably have bought this last August, um, so it's done really well. Now, I don't want to get too uh, speculative, so I probably won't buy any more uh, technology ETFs just because I, I'm a bit, um, I'm not much of a speculator and I don't want to put all my money in one thing. So I, I'd rather put my money in more of a large cap or mid cap index, which we'll get to in a second. All right, the next one is uh, international emerging markets. So this is pretty much all your underdeveloped companies, uh, you know, South Africa, India, stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning as I go and According to Bernie McKeel, you should have about 5%. Even David Bach recommends you have about 5% in, in uh, emerging markets. I probably have less than that just because I'm not 100% familiar with emerging market ETFs. So I only have one share. Um, not, nothing too exciting about that. But anyways, moving on, the next two, which is uh, mid-cap and mid-cap growth. So the difference between mid-cap index and mid-cap growth Mid-cap index is pretty much tracking like the S&P mid-cap 400 index, and then this one is growth. So this one will hold mainly companies with high P ratios and uh, growth expectations. So both of them are doing pretty good. This one's about doing 5%. Uh, mid-cap growth is doing about 9%. Overall, pr pretty uh, happy to have these in my portfolio. Uh, mid-cap always has a little bit more room for growth given that they're not small companies, but they're more middle-sized companies and uh, stable companies as well. So mid-cap is uh, definitely a great one to have in your portfolio, especially if you're, if you're in your 20s, maybe 30s. Okay, the next ones that I have is IJR, and this is a small cap ETF, and I hold about $342 of it. Uh, relatively small amounts. Uh, in combination with the emerging markets, I probably hold maybe about 5 maybe 8%. In small cap and emerging markets put together and that's about it um, like I said I don't like to take too much risk um, so which kind of shows the next two here which is ITA and IVV you notice I have a larger amount in IVV uh, and ITA which is basically uh, the same thing but um, these two are the large cap S&P 500 index uh, again these are big blue chip companies like Amazon big companies uh, pretty stable. I put mo most of my money in uh, large cap just because I have more confidence in it. Um, and I know that it's probably the best I'm going to do if, if I'm investing in large cap. So again, the, the, having money invested in the large cap, uh, I know that I'm going to get the average market return. So uh, I feel pretty good about that. I think one of the biggest mistakes uh, when I first started investing was I was trying to find you know, investments that we're going to beat the market, but uh, I mean, number one, if you're doing that with individual stocks, it becomes really difficult to forecast earnings. But um, uh, again, don't try to beat the market. Just do what the market does by the index, whether it's uh, small cap, mid cap, or large cap, and you know you should see some pretty nice returns. Um, okay, so moving on, we have LQD, and this is a investment grade bond ETF. Uh, pretty much holds. Uh, pretty much holds corporate bonds with B minus and above ratings. So anything from B minus to B plus, A and triple A rated bonds are in this um, ETF. And these are all corporate bonds. So corporate bonds are nice because um, throughout the history, probably the last 10 year period, they've this ETF has done about a uh, 6% average return, which is probably uh, far better than the AGG. AGG has only done about 3% within the last 10 years. So I figure if I'm going to buy some bonds, I might as well buy some corporate bonds. And the nice thing about corporate bonds, if you if you put it into perspective, is that um, corporations are actually obligated to pay off bondholders before they pay off their, their common stockholders. So by holding corporate bonds, you know that you're the first on the list to get paid. So I figured, you know what, it can't be it's probably a little bit less riskier than holding common stock. So, you know, and at the same time, um, I need about 15% of bonds in my portfolio. So that's, uh, so if I were to combine the AGG, 
the LQD and the TLT, um, that pretty much gives me my, actually right now I'm sitting about 9%, so I need a little bit more bonds in my portfolio. I actually need to be about 15%. Uh, so, and the way you can calculate that is just very simple, right? You you calculate all your bond, or or whether you're doing your stocks, you just calculate the total amount, and then you divide it by the total amount, and that would give you the percentage. Very simple math. Um, then I have this VPU uh, sector utility. Uh, when I originally bought this, I was reading Benjamin Graham, and I read a section in the book that said it was probably a good idea to invest in utility sectors just because it's pretty stable, and utility companies, I mean, don't seem to be uh, going anywhere anytime soon and they pay, they pay a pretty uh, high dividend ratio throughout the year so I was like you know what why not uh, it had a beta point of about 0.7 I believe so you know it tells you it's a little bit less volatile than the SP 500 so I bought it and since then it has not performed well I'm actually down negative 11 percent which I'm not too happy about so I'm hoping that this uh, VPU is somewhat of a cyclical business and uh, eventually will come back up, but in the meantime, I don't mind the dividends. It's paying. It's paying enough to slowly reinvest into new common. So I plan to hold this ETF uh, for about ten years. I mean, and and that goes for all the other uh, ETFs that I hold. Um, the 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 longest I plan to hold this. I mean, the shortest amount of time is about ten years. Uh, again, this this is a more of a long term approach. I don't do any day trading. I don't uh, you know I don't do any of that stuff. I just like to buy my investments, and now I just like to let the market ride, and pay get my dividends four times a a year, and every, I get I, I actually get paid interest every month for all the bond ETFs that I hold, such as the TLT, the LQD, and the AGG. And so this last one is the VET. This is the international. Uh, I recently been learning a little bit more about diversity and asset allocation, and I realized that I wasn't holding any developed international stocks, so I went to go. I went ahead and bought this uh, VT. This one is actually from Vanguard. I only have two Vanguard, I believe. Yeah, so I have two Vanguard ETFs. And the only reason why I buy Vanguard is because I, I really trust the company. I mean, it's it's it was by uh you know the CEO John Bogle. So I have a uh, just really good trust in Vanguard. So uh, because I don't know too much about developed international stocks, I wanted to make sure that. I bought Vanguard just because I, you know, they have a long track record of of, of just a good returns and good history. Um, so that's pretty much it. The the last thing I would say, I mean, this is a Fidelity account, so all the iShare ETFs and even the Fidelity ETFs, uh, I pretty much get those commission free, which I don't have to pay transaction costs when I buy this, and that's probably the main reason why I buy these. Um, but such as the Vanguard and such as the VT, I have to pay about four ninety five per transaction. So I'm very selective on which ETFs I actually buy that are not either iShare or Fidelity, because again I'm trying to save money on my on my transaction costs. So if you look at my total return uh, for I've had this this account for about a little over a year now, probably a little less actually. I didn't actually start investing till I was probably in July, but um, so far I'm up. 5.5 percent which is i'm okay with i mean it's not great um i mean if you guys remember the last i think it was the beginning of february the stock market just went went crazy for the next three months and it really ruined a lot of the returns but again i'm in this for the long term so uh again going back to the transaction costs um you know if i were to have transaction costs for each and every transaction i probably would not have this amount so again Anytime you can avoid transaction costs, go ahead and do it. I mean, they will really damage your portfolio. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you start making 20 transactions, I mean, do the math. It, it can really eat up to your earnings. All right, so I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, give me a like. Have a great day. Thanks.